يا راغبا في كل علم نافع ينمو العلم ويتقدم بتقنياته ومجالاته ومعه مطور أدواتنا في تقديم العلم الشرعي أكاديمية زاد زاد أكاديمية ينبوعها صاف صاف ليروي غلة الظمآن والسيرة العلياء وعطرة الشدا طيب يفوح لأهل كل زمان بشرى دنازات أكاديمية للعلم كالأزهار في البستان بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وآله وصحبه ومن اهتدى بهداه Amma Bad, now that all cards are on the table and the Prophet ﷺ held nothing back, he told them bluntly, all these idols you're worshipping are false deities. There's only one God to be worshipped. He's the creator of the heavens and the earth. He's the one who showers his mercy and blessings over you. He's the one who provides. He's the one who facilitates. He's the one who gives life and death. So you have no choice but to worship him. And I am his prophet and messenger. I am the servant of Allah, the Almighty. Remember, Mecca, the tribe of Quraysh and all those who came along with it, they were hostile people, violent people. They had no words to express their feelings. And the fastest way of doing this is their swords. So what would you expect the whole of the community, which was led by arrogant men, fierce enemies of Islam, such as Abu Lahab, such as Abu Sufyan ibn Harb, such as Utbah ibn Rabi'ah, Shaybah ibn Rabi'ah, Ubay ibn Khalaf, and the likes. What would you expect them to do? The whole of the tribe of Quraysh followed these notorious enemies of Islam. So they reacted in a hostile way. They started brutally torturing and abusing Muslims in their families and their tribes and those of the other families and tribes, wherever and whenever it was possible, they would explode in their faces and deal with them in a very harsh way. And the Prophet ﷺ was not an exception. He too was abused physically and verbally by them. Narrated by Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, may Allah be pleased with him. And the hadith is in Sahih al-Bukhari and Muslim. When the Prophet was once praying in the courtyard of the Kaaba, these mushriks, these idol worshippers, told one another, who among you would go to the house of so-and-so and bring the placenta of this she-camel that just gave birth. So someone of them went and brought it. All this filth and disgusting material that comes out when a baby she-camel is born. 
And he took that when the Prophet was prostrating Islam and placed it on his head and back. And they started laughing from what they see. The Prophet وسلم, did not even raise his head. He kept on prostrating until someone notified Fatima and she came running as a child and removed it from his back. Only then the Prophet ﷺ raised his head, concluded his prayer, and then raised his hands and made dua. O oh Allah, punish Quraysh. O oh Allah, punish Quraysh. O oh Allah, punish Quraysh. They were petrified by the dua of the Prophet ﷺ. Yet they did not stop. They continued to harm his companions. And to face and encounter such aggression, the Prophet ﷺ took two wise steps. And this had a huge impact and a positive impact to uh, the Islam and to the Muslims. What did the Prophet do? The first step was that he chose a place for his companions to convene and to join in so that it would be the center of da'wah and the call. And this place was the house of Al-Arqam ibn Abi Al-Arqam. And they used to convene there, recite the Quran, learn the religion, and strengthen one another away from the eyesight of the disbelievers. And this would help them organize their activities and their works. The second step was to allow the companions to migrate. And when life was really tough, the Prophet ﷺ told the companions that in Abyssinia, in the land of Ethiopia, there is a king in whose realm no one is mistreated. And this shows you that the Prophet ﷺ had insight and used to ask and know the environment around him. So he knew that there was a fair and just king in Ethiopia. So he told his companions to go to his land until Allah makes a way out for you. So the Muslims left to Ethiopia and they were honored by the king, by an Najashi. May Allah be pleased with him. And among the first to go were Uthman ibn Affan. May Allah be pleased with him, who is the third caliph and who was married to Ruqayya, the daughter of the Prophet ﷺ, who went with him alongside a number of the companions, senior companions. And this was the first migration that took place approximately five years after the Prophet's mission had started ﷺ. And they say that they were about 11 men and four women. This was the first migration. This first migration was for few months until they heard false rumors that the people of Quraysh have accepted 
Islam and now everybody is practicing Islam without any form of oppression. So they went back. But unfortunately, when they went back, they found it even worse than when they had left. So they went again to Abyssinia for the second migration, but this time they were about 82 men and 12 women alongside with their children. So a big chunk of the Muslims have migrated. This did not go down well with the people of Quraysh when they saw that a huge number of their people have been relocated to establish, to establish a new religion. So they did not leave them alone. And this shows you their mindset, their evil mindset. People who came up with a new religion, something that you don't like, the worst that could happen is they leave and they worship and preach their own religion somewhere else. Leave them be. You have nothing to do with them. No. The people of Quraysh do not want this to happen. And they would not, it would not go down well down their throats. So what they did was they sent two of their men trying to pursue the king of Ethiopia to send these renegades back to their people. They sent Amr ibn al-As and Abdullah ibn Abi Rabi'ah after them so that they would convince the ruler of Ethiopia through their gifts and wealth that they sent with these two messengers to distribute upon his men, priests, rulers, etc., to convince the king, but to no avail, because the king of Ethiopia, of the Abyssinians and Najashi, accepted Islam. And he told them, and sending, sending them back with their gifts, that these people would, are free to worship Allah Azza wa on my land for as long as they wish. And they went back to Quraysh empty-handed and defeated. Through this hard times, there would always be a breeze of fresh air. And this is part of Allah's mercy. Whenever it gets tough, the tough gets going. Whenever the going gets tough, the tough gets going. Allah Azza wa Jal always sends us things to relax us in times of distress and calamity. Through these times, two great men accepted Islam. Mentioning their names throws the fear in the hearts of the men of Quraysh. These two great warriors were Hamza, the uncle of the Prophet والسلام, Hamza ibn Abdul Muttalib and Umar ibn al-Khattab. And he was the second caliph in Islam and the second best man in Islam after Abu Bakr. Here, Quraysh knew that they cannot continue to torture and torment the people with such strong backup manifested in Hamza and in Umar. So they thought that it might be best to start to negotiate with the Prophet alayhi salatu wassalam. Hada wallahu a'lam wa nisbatul ilmi alayhi aslam.
وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد يا راغبا في كل علم نافع ينمو العلم ويتقدم بتقنياته ومجالاته ومعه نطور أدواتنا في تقديم العلم الشرعي أكاديمية زاد زاد أكاديمية ينبوعها صاف صاف ليروي غلة الظمآن والسيرة العلياء وعطرة الشدا طيب يفوح لأهل كل زمان بشرى لنا زاد أكاديمية للعلم كالأزهار في البستان